Hi guys, it's Shelley here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. So here is another video for the autumn series of how I colour autumn elements on our adult colouring book pages. I'm still colouring from the same page that I did from Nelko Neko's Story of Precious Cats. It's a harvest page. It has quite a few elements on the page that I can use to show how I colour certain autumn elements. So I'm still sticking to this page and just picking out some elements. And I have noticed, so the next uh, element I'm going to be doing is, is the corn. And I have noticed that a lot of harvest pages in our adult colouring book uh, books have got corn in them, whether they're quite a large part or a large um, size on the page or whether they're very small elements on the page. But the corn is there and I thought it would be fun to try to colour them in and try to figure out how to make them look good um, or fairly good. And so yeah, here is how I colour corn. Now I haven't really coloured corn before, I think there's only one other page, I think I've mentioned it before, that I've coloured corn in and that is um, a similar sort of sort of a harvest page in Circle of Life by Mel Pomeni Chatsi Panagitu. But the corn on those particular, uh, in that particular page, uh, they were quite small so I couldn't really work on trying to make them look a little bit more realistic. So I thought this would be a great page to try it out and try to learn how to do it. So along with showing you how I color corn, I'm also trying to figure it out on this particular uh, page. I'm not so sure it looks super realistic, but I think my main aim for this first try at coloring corn is just to try and make it at least identifiable as corn. So um, yeah, I think I'm happy with the way it's turned out. So what I found um, that would be important to try and achieve when we're coloring the corn is to make sure that each, is it the, a kernel? Each kernel on the corn is, um, looks rounded in itself. So each individual kernel looks rounded. And at the same time, the entire ear of the corn, so the entire cob, um, looks rounded as well. Trying to make sure that each kernel looks rounded and the entire cob looks rounded will help us achieve a good 3D effect to our corn on the cob. So each kernel, if we look at the kernels first, so each kernel, it's important to have a good highlight color um, sort of at the center of, of, the, of the kernel and around the edges of the kernel it's important to try and use a quite a dark color to make it look rounded. So it, it goes back to exactly what we've done with the pumpkin and um, what we've done with the grapes where we try and maintain a highlight sort of in the center of um, the fruit or segment of the fruit um, and the edges we try and darken up so that the object or the element looks rounded. And that's what we have to do for every single kernel um, in each row, basically. This will give the effect that each kernel is rounded and it will sort of give the 3D effect um, to sort of trick the eye um, into thinking that each kernel is separate. Because if you look at the, the illustration uncolored, it's very hard to picture the 3D effect on this particular sort of illustration where there's no grayscale, it's a little bit sketchy. Um, and so it's hard to picture the end result. But when you're putting in the dark shadows and the highlights, you will automatically start to see how each kernel will look rounded individually and sort of separate it from the other kernels around it. So the pencil colors I use to color the corn is basically a mix of yellows and browns. And for my highlights, I use a very light or bright yellow. I think it was light cadmium yellow as my lightest yellow shade. And I use a white as well. So when I'm placing down, I start with my lightest yellow and I sort of mark out um, where the highlight is going to be. So I leave the area 
where my highlight is going to be in the middle of the kernel without any color on it and so just the white of the paper showing through and then I'll use white to brighten that highlight spot and then um, from my light cadmium yellow I use a darker shade of yellow and I work through to my browns and my darkest shade of brown I think if I'm not mistaken was burnt umber so like I've mentioned before I find that using a large having a large contrast between your lightest pencil and your darkest pencil gives the first of all makes the element on the page pop and also helps with giving um, the 3d effect you're trying to create because you're basically trying to use highlights and shadows to sort of create shapes on of the object that you're coloring to create to, to sort of make it 3d I work on one row of kernels first um, just to show how I'm going to be coloring in each kernel and as I'm starting to work through the pencils um, getting into my darker uh, colors you will start to see each kernel start to look individual on the page so after figuring out how to make each kernel look rounded and individual and 3d then it's now important to work on the entire cob and try to look uh try to make each row of kernels look individual look 3d make the entire cob look rounded to achieve this we have to think about where we're going to put our shadows uh not for each kernel but for each row so basically if you take the on the cob um, that we have in front of us that we're coloring if you take the lowermost row of kernels we are going to need to make it look like it's behind the second row of kernels that's just above it and so the shadow will be on the top part of those kernels to make it look be like it's behind the row of kernels above it or the second row of kernels and therefore the highlight area for that row of kernels will be so yes in the center of each kernel however we're not going to use our dark pencil on the lower part of the kernels or the row of kernels so if you see there will be no brown on the lower part of each kernel so we may use the darker shades of yellows but we will not use our darkest pencils so i think it was uh, definitely the burnt umber we won't and i think it was burnt sienna that we will not put on those areas so it again still maintains the rounded look of each kernel and it also helps us achieve placing that row of kernels behind the second row of kernels does that make sense i hope it does <laughs> I think rather than me talking through it, just watching it will probably make more sense. So I won't go into too much more detail, but yeah, I think we just have to um, see where we're going to place our shadows and highlights to make each kernel look individual and rounded and each row look um, 3D and the whole and therefore achieve a 3D effect or a rounded effect for the entire cob. Now, we definitely not don't have to put this much effort into colouring every cob that we do. However, as you guys know, I like to make the elements on a page pop. I use so many layers of pencils usually and I like to do shadowing or shading. I like to do layer after layer of colouring. That's probably why I'm such a slow colourist. And I, yeah, I don't achieve super realistic effects because I'm not an artist, but I like to try and make my whole entire page pop and I think what I figured out is to be able to do that I have to try and make this 2D image look 3D so therefore try and make each element on the page look a little bit more um, 3D so um, you know make sure I place certain objects on the page um, create shadows to make them look like they're behind other objects or in front of other objects and then certain elements like this corn try and make each element that makes up the corn look 3d 
Um, so I enjoy doing that. I, I have fun doing that. But by all means, you don't have to do that. You Whatever you enjoy doing, whatever you enjoy, however you enjoy coloring, whether it's straight coloring, whether it's using brighter colors or non-realistic colors, um, whether it's using loads of layers or don't use lots of layers, whatever you enjoy coloring, however you enjoy coloring, that's what you do. I'm just sharing how I color, how I enjoy coloring, how I enjoy bringing life to my coloring pages. Basically just sharing my style of coloring. So hopefully you're enjoying watching how I color certain elements on adult coloring pages, especially this autumn series, and um, how I put my little, um, a little piece of me into my coloring. And yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying that. And maybe even if you don't like my style, um, you know, when you come to do the coloring, maybe you'll pick up some ideas that you might want to try out in your style. So hopefully um, some of these videos do help in a little way or you just enjoy watching and hearing me chat or watching me color. So I'll leave it there for today and I'll let you guys watch the rest of the video. And hopefully I'll be back with you soon with another How I Color video for the Autumn series. I hope you guys are all doing well. As always, thank you for watching and commenting and liking my videos. I really do appreciate it and I've had so much fun interacting with you all. So thank you. Um, so yeah, take care and catch up with you in the next video. Bye bye.